The European Commission has determined that over 80% of the environmental impact of products is actually determined right back at the design stage. I want to take that little piece of information and use it for all of us as business leaders to pause for a moment and instead of thinking about the massive, huge, big scale of issues or pressures or constraints that are coming at us, to stop and today bring our attention back to the things we actually have control over, to the decisions we are already making inside our businesses. And then one step beyond that to the things we have some influence over. So we may not have direct decision-making rights, but we can influence them. I want to use a few different questions and prompts and little ideas for you today just to help to make some of this start to become practical and for hopefully you to start to look at your business in a different way. One of the mantras that I use in my own life and that I always share with the business leaders that I work with is to encourage you to think like a system but act like an entrepreneur. In today's conversation, we're drilling in to some of the specific pieces that are down in that action space of acting like an entrepreneur. But they are influenced by the fact that we are the types of leaders and thinkers who can think big and who have done that first part of the mantra, think like a system, and we are now drilling down to act like an entrepreneur. So with that in mind and with this idea that 80% of the environmental impact of products is actually determined right back at the design stage. I want to first up just show you a few different things that I grabbed from here in my house today as some ideas. Now, these things that I'm going to be showing you and talking through are physical items. So, they will have a practical application for those of you who run a business where there is a product, something that you actually are producing. But don't tune out and think this isn't relevant to you if you have a service-based business because I will, I will get to how this applies for you. But really the conversation today came about when I was unpacking the groceries that had just been delivered to our house and I was really happy by one of the changes that the supermarkets have made here. And so it sparked in my mind this idea of the importance of a business thinking about this design element right back when we're making decisions that have this flow on environmental impact. So let me show you. Um, so that you know what on earth I'm talking about. So here in Australia, um, with the one of the bigger supermarkets, Woolworths, which we shop at, um, they have now stopped using plastic bags. So they've gone to paper bags. And as I unpacked the groceries, two things, well, three things stood out. Firstly, brilliant, um, and one of my kids in particular said, oh, this makes me feel so much better that the bags aren't plastic. But the second piece that I loved, which goes back to this thoughtful design element, where there is not only uh, a, a positive environmental impact, but there's also thought to make the process of reuse and reducing waste easy for the customer as well, for the consumer. So first decision that they've made is to take away the plastic. So big decision on their part that has uh, a positive flow on effect in terms of the environmental impact. 
The next thing that they've done, though, it's coming up to Christmas and they have decorated the bags with Christmas themed decorations and then actually have put the cutout lines and designed it so that you can cut them and use it as your Christmas wrapping paper. Now, I know that's not everyone's cup of tea, but I'm someone who also uses who gives a crap toilet paper and I usually wrap Christmas presents in uh, this, <laughs> not in the toilet paper, but in the um, the paper that is around each roll. So given I'm someone who's willing to wrap people's Christmas presents in the paper off your toilet paper, I am definitely someone who is now going to be cutting all of these bags and using them to wrap Christmas presents rather than buying wrapping paper separately and, and producing that again. So that was the second piece where there was some thoughtfulness. If we go back to the taking responsibility for the decisions we're making, the um, raw materials we're already using and the flow on impacts of how easy we are making it for someone to reuse it, recycle it, or reduce that, that impact environmentally. The next thing that was a decision that they had made, which most companies still don't really think about in terms of ease of use and um, making that customer experience better, is they could have made these bags so that it could be my Christmas wrapping paper and it was reducing waste, taking away plastic and using recycled paper. But then if they hadn't thought about it from a design perspective and a user perspective, the stickers that they put on them that has, you know, the, the scan with uh, our name and address that the driver uses to bring them to our house, if they had used stickers that then proceeded to be really um, cheap and nasty in the way they were made and stuck to the paper so that when I pulled them off they ripped the paper, then it would have defeated the purpose from them being reusable. So I was very happy when stickers came off easily and didn't rip. You may be thinking, why on earth are you making a video about this, Bessie? It's some grocery bags and some stickers, big deal. The reason it is a big deal, and I'm using it as an example for you, is that when we start to, as business leaders, pull back into our consciousness the intentional decisions that we are making, then change can flow from there because it's actually manageable. These types of decisions have massive flow on effects. So you've only got to listen to that statistic I used at the beginning from the, the European Commission. Around 80% of environmental impacts of products is determined right back at the design stage. Those decisions are with us as business leaders. They're not small things. And once we set in motion those decisions we're making, it makes it either easier or harder for customers or others down the line to be thoughtful in their decisions and to reduce their negative impacts in the world or get better outcomes through using our product or service. So this thoughtfulness and the role of design and intentional decision making is actually critical right back at this stage. Before I move on to some of the specific questions and areas for you to consider as a business leader, I want to just show you a few more things while we stay in the space of more of the product-based businesses. So when you think about the way that we can all make a difference and an impact in the world, if each of us as consumers has to get our head around the intricate details of every single flow-on impact of the packaging of the um, the actual contents itself of every product we buy, 
that just does your head in. It's not possible. We can't do that. So from a consumer perspective, we actually rely on each business that we are buying from, that we are procuring from, to be making good decisions when they produce these products that we're buying. With the way that it actually flows out and what makes change happen and what makes these things manageable is to bring them back into looking at, as I said, what do we have control over and what can we influence? And so as a business leader, you have to start to be more thoughtful and considered in really identifying those things as they sit for your business. What does that look like? What are the things you have decision-making rights over? What are the things you have control over? Where are you spending money? And when you look at the decisions that you make there, how are you making those decisions on where to spend your money, who to procure from, what products or services you're buying. Like I said, I'm going to stay on products for, for a moment. One of the things when you think about this design aspect of 80% of the impacts coming right back to the design, and we think about how we make it easier for customers to actually do the right thing and reuse, recycle, reduce all of those pieces. Really simple aspects come down to the packaging and how you communicate both the decisions you've already made and how the customer themselves can dispose of or reduce their environmental impacts in the world. So I, for probably 30 years, have been a huge fan of Trini Woodall. And in the last few years, when she's brought out her own uh, brand, Trini London, I use that. There's a few um, examples with some of her products in terms of the packaging and also the way that they make the, the products that are worth mentioning. So firstly, with all of her skincare, the bottles themselves are refillable. So you simply twist and remove the um, empty canister when you finish and you get a refill, which rather than having the really um, dense, heavy outer packaging and just wasting that, you keep that and you just replace the canister itself. So there's significant aspects that have been thought about in the design of that product, which help me as the consumer reduce the negative uh, environmental impacts that I'm having through that process. But those decisions were made by the company. When you look um, on the box itself in terms of that piece I was saying of communicate to a customer the decisions you have made and then the decisions they can make that have the positive impact. So the paper itself, you know, it, it goes through where it's certified that the um, canister itself is refillable. All of those components are captured and thought about in the packaging itself. Again, um, staying with Trini Woodall or Trini London, the brand, um, I need my glasses. The other piece was related to, uh, can I read it? Yes, so they're part of this positive luxury uh, brands to trust. So they have thought about the actual um, way that they make the makeup, the way that they make the products themselves. Mm -hmm. And then the last thing related to uh, Trini's products is in the boxes themselves when you get your products from them, the cardboard box is 100% biodegradable. They use um, eco-friendly inks. It is responsibly sourced in terms of the, the, the paper, the cardboard itself. And the other piece of really uh, interesting communication on the box is to do with the fact that they are thinking about their carbon footprint. So they're part of this zero packaging uh, 
piece here where they're, for those of you who are aware of uh, the aspects related to carbon emissions, they're scope one and two emissions. There's uh, zero and they're offsetting for their scope three. So the communication here for a customer who actually is interested and cares, the business has made some really good intentional decisions, then without making a massive deal about it, it's not all over their social media. It's not like the main point that they're pushing to a customer from a value proposition perspective, but they are making it clear and communicating decisions that they're making from a right back at the design stage and allowing you as a customer to be aware of that and go, interesting, okay, I now know that related to their scope three emissions, they are using offsets for that, okay. Everyone has different opinions about uh, offsets and whether they're good, bad, indifferent, uh, but at least they're telling me from a transparency perspective what it looks like and then that the um, carbon footprint itself for their scope one and two is at uh, zero emissions. So interesting, interesting sort of decisions there that they're making. Uh, again, I've spoken to you before about who gives a crap that both the uh, way that they make their products is thoughtful in terms of the raw materials that they use. So it's bamboo for the tissues uh, and you know, their, their packaging, even the way they deliver it now, the company that they um, use to deliver because it's on a subscription basis in terms of their business model. All of those aspects, um, the paper used for the toilet paper, the packaging doesn't have plastic, all of these things are decisions right back at that design stage that are being made by a business to have that positive impact and to make it easier for a consumer to not have to go into this overwhelming amount of uh, research and details and information, but to be able to make good decisions that are aligned with their own values and what they care about. The I've got a bunch of other things here, but briefly, um, you know, there's other decisions that companies can make around having much bigger sized products so that people can simply refill rather than um, be constantly having to buy smaller single-use plastic and uh, and creating more environmental damage that way. Equally, there's things like um, in our house, we use single-use ain't sexy as the hand wash. So rather than the plastic bottle, we've got the glass bottle rather than having um, the environmental impact of shipping or transporting a heavy uh, hand wash with all the liquid in it. You simply get the little tablets sent to you on the subscription and you fill up the water at your own house and drop the tablet in. So there's aspects that are related to the business's decision that make my life and environmental impact easier and the mental load that I have to manage as a customer easier uh, without the business simply seeing those things as an externality, not their problem, and saying, how do we have the lowest cost, cheapest um, packaging, et cetera. Now, for another conversation, we can go into the fact that in the nearly 25 years that I've been working in this space, I can absolutely tell you that when you design a business model intentionally and think through these things, it doesn't have to be a matter of an either or decision here. It doesn't have to be that as a business, you're saying, oh, we're going to make these decisions about the packaging and it's therefore going to cost us more and we're going to reduce our profits or financial stability of the organization because of the environmental decision. The work that I do with companies and what I'm encouraging you to do as a business leader is to have that mindset that I call a both and mindset, where you start to 
sit with the fact that two things that seem like contradictions can be equally true and start to get comfortable with the fact that you can merge money and meaning. They don't have to be mutually exclusive. It's not a matter of in making a better environmental decision that it automatically means you're going to lose money. That's not how it works, folks. And it's time to stop being so simplistic in our thinking. Because, for example, if we stay with um, the example I gave you around the hand wash, we'll think about that for a moment. If you as a company are able to send out these tablets instead of having to ship the weight of that water, not only does it have the massive positive environmental impact, that is going to cost less from a shipping perspective. That is going to cost less in a whole bunch of things uh, that factor into the back end of your business model canvas. So think about it more broadly and, as I said, have the nuanced approach to learn to business model in a way where you can wrestle with your own business and the decisions you're making to the point where you get to a place where they can actually create a win-win. So the, the aspects, again, could go through a ton of different examples with you. And if you're interested or if, for example, you want to ask a specific question as it relates to your business, I would love for you to ask me that question either in the comments or send me a private message and I'm happy to do a video and, uh, and go through any of your particular questions or to bring examples um, that might be useful for you. So tell me if you want uh, to dig in on a specific aspect. But I just want to, before we finish this video, I want to pause and give you a little bit of how to connect this if you have a service-based business. So I've shown you these aspects of intentional decisions that businesses that have a product or in the case of um, you know, the supermarket who are delivering uh, my groceries, <clears throat> excuse me, how they have thought about right back at that design phase, ensuring that they are reducing the negative environmental impacts and ensuring that they increase the chance of making it as easy as possible for their customers to reduce waste, to recycle things, to reuse things. So they're the practical examples if you have a product-based business. Before we wrap up, for those of you who have a service-based business, just to tie these things in, let's be realistic. All of us, so my businesses have always been service-based businesses. All of us who have a service-based business are still procuring certain products and services, uh, sorry, products themselves that have some kind of packaging, that have issues related to their postage, that have issues related to whether they're recyclable, plastics, all of those things, right? So you can take this same conversation today and look at the aspects of where you are spending money and interacting. What are you procuring? What do you give to clients as gifts? It could be as simple as we're coming up to Christmas. What are the gifts you, you are buying for your clients? What Christmas cards are you using? What's the paper made from? You know, How do you start to be more conscious and intentional right back at owning and taking responsibility for those decisions that you are already making and for the flow and impacts that has. So you can think about the, the components of, in your own company, the paper that you buy for your printers, the actual electronic equipment that you use, and whether you are properly disposing of, recycling, uh, reusing that at the end of its uh, shelf life within your company. Thinking about, as I said, gifts for, for clients and, and team. Thinking about the aspects of within your office itself, the power that you use 
things as simple as the uh, the toilet paper, the tissues, the paper, the ink in the printer. If you run events, are you using plastic water bottles, you know, that people use once and then it takes 700 years for that waste to be uh, out there in the environment? Those pieces, don't be flippant about them. Actually be thoughtful. Make intentional decisions in what you are buying and the impacts that has, the message that sends to clients. And the last thing I'll say on this, uh, the more that you work with me or dig in on things like business modeling with me, the more you will understand that I am pragmatic and that I do not blur those lines between some of these decisions that we might make as an individual business leader and what might be a value proposition that we are actively highlighting and promoting to a customer. So what I'm not saying to you is that you have to now have a huge part of your visible marketing or packaging having the main point being about the recyclability or the decisions that you're making to reduce the negative environmental impact. If that's not a key piece connected to a value proposition for a customer, you don't have to make it the main point. But just as I showed you the example of Trini London, what you can do is just be really transparent and upfront about the decisions you are making that have these positive impacts in the world. It doesn't have to be the primary point, but what you will find is that for customers who do care about that stuff already, they will become a more loyal customer. You will get serious uh, competitive advantages from customer loyalty. You will have a more trusted brand. So from that perspective of uh, improved brand association, you will have increased market positioning. The the All of the research shows that we're having a rapid increase in the um, the benefits that companies are seeing where they actively communicate those positive decisions that they're making, even if it's not the primary value proposition for a customer. The, the shifts and the changes in the market are not going away and there will be both uh, compliance and regulatory issues that you will be forced to comply with over time and so you may as well get ahead of those things make those decisions now and have then a multi-layered impact from a positive perspective that positions your brand better in the market that for your own sense of um, ease and pride in your business and the decisions you're making you can sit comfortably with that your team will be in a better position in terms of being proud of being associated with a company making good decisions so all of this requires you to be a thoughtful, thoughtful leader. It requires you to be someone who is not just being simplistic, as I said before, or one-dimensional in how you think about the purpose of your business or your role as the leader of that business. In everything that I am talking to you about and the examples I'm giving you, I'm not asking you to flip from one extreme to the other. I'm not asking you to suddenly only take into account environmental aspects or social aspects and expectations at the expense of the financial stability of your business. What I am asking you to do is to go back to my mantra, think like a system, act like an entrepreneur. I am encouraging you that if in fact you shift that mindset from an either or mindset to a both and mindset and you learn to build a business where you genuinely have merged money and meaning and you're unapologetic about both of them, right? You're not compromising on either one. You are unapologetically saying this business has both. Then what you will actually find happens is you will strengthen the financial stability of your business. 
you will tap into really significant uh, competitive advantages that have financial benefit and bring stability, which is a beautiful thing. But you will also have brought back into your work a much stronger sense of meaning and purpose. And you will have uh, aspects related to your business that you now can feel proud of and that you now won't have any discomfort or aspects where you're going, I actually feel quite guilty <laughs> about the damage that I'm doing in the background here. So I'm now trying to make up for that by giving a donation here or, or you know, doing some sort of contribution or good external to the business. These decisions and these pieces of information that I'm sharing with you are all to empower you and to help you not feel helpless, not feel overwhelmed and like it's all too big, but to really just bring it back in-house, boil it down and start to look at the things you have decision-making rights over. So for today, we're going right back to that thing of 80% of the environmental impacts of products are determined right back at the design stage. It's our decision as business leaders to think about and make these decisions in a way that actually has a much more positive flow on effect than simply treating them as externalities and acting as if the only factor to consider is what's seen as the um, most cost effective upfront, you know, lowest cost equals best outcome. It's just not true. So think like a system, act like an entrepreneur.